very much, uh, Joanne, and thank you very much for the opportunity to be uh, part of this event, and I must say, regrettably, not in person. Um, but I'll speak today uh, briefly uh, to pick up on some of the topics the previous speakers have, uh, have put on the table. This is the topic of investment, but also, as you foreshadowed, the topic of regional integration, and importantly, another issue of building resilience when it comes to infrastructure investments. Stepping back a little bit, 2020 has been a tough year globally. This is probably a, an understatement at this stage. We see that global um, economic activity is uh, slowing down uh, quite a lot, and Greece has not been spared from that. Some of the contractions that we see are driven um, a lot by contraction in investment. For example, the latest statistics in Greece tells us that about 8.5% uh, contraction of investment was marked in just the first half of 2020. This is very similar to the contraction of the economy itself. Why is this important? This contraction comes on the back of Greece's investment position. And as we heard today uh, in earlier session, but also in this session, um, this investment position is characterized by a fairly low rate and a, a low capital productivity. Investment, uh, again, if we look at numbers as a share of the economy in Greece, is about one half of the EU average. What this tells us is that there is an ample potential to boost investment, and in the words of the, of, of the minister just, uh, just uh, a while ago, it is really uh, um, extremely important to boost investment, and the time to do this is now. Um, investment is important so that it can support not only the recovery, but it can support also income growth of uh, the people of Greece. And um, the authorities, the minister and other speakers uh, have been uh, really making a wonderful case of all of what has been done to this extent. And there is no question about how critical um, a, a boost in investment it is for economic uh, growth and activity in, uh, in the country. But the challenges unleashed by COVID-19 require a broader, in my view, policy response. And here, in addition to boosting investment, other complementary efforts can be of pivotal importance. These efforts, I would like to um, underline two aspects of those. One relates to deepening the regional integration, a topic put on the table already. And the other one this is the increased resilience to shocks and national, natural disasters. And we at the World Bank have looked at both, and that's why I wanted to discuss each of them a little bit in turn and give you some of our experience. Let me start with the first one. Greece has uh, long had uh, aspirations of becoming a gateway, um, a gateway to the coveted Central European freight hinterland, and rightly so. The benefits of such aspirations uh, can be very large. Uh, they would allow the country to integrate further in global value chains and draw higher benefits from participating in international markets. For example, uh, port to door from Asia to Central Europe via the port of Piraeus can be shortened by as much as one week compared to uh, a transit, a similar transit uh, occurring through the northern European ports which are traditionally used. And today, from what we hear again in this, uh, in this forum, Greece is actually in a position of realistically attaining this goal. It has not only a favorable geography, but it has the infrastructure, a capable terminal operator, engaged regulatory and planning agency. There are a few challenges to uh, be overcome, and, uh, and from the discussion thus far, I, I, uh, I become aware that the first one um, is to um, overcome the, the, the issue of scale. For Greece to become a gateway, it really needs transit volumes. And transit volumes currently are small. Over three quarters of port throughput comprises transshipment uh, containers. There is nothing wrong with this. Transshipments are good to the economy. Transshipment volumes are important. But their economic impact can be, um, is, is, is estimated to be about four times lower than that of a gateway. So significant economic benefits can come from, from, uh, from becoming a gateway um, for uh, transit volumes. Becoming a, a, a gateway, however,
however, hinges upon also ensuring access to reliable rail intermodal connections, seamless tracking itineraries, and actions that occur not only at home in Greece, but also beyond Greece. And you're far better positioned what these actions are, and I hear that there are good plans by the authorities with respect to the actions in Greece. But beyond Greece is what I want to focus here on. Any gateway strategy will depend on efficient border crossing, on cross-border IT system integration, and infrastructure provision in the transit countries, particularly in northern Macedonia and Serbia, and to a secondary importance, Bulgaria. So to this end, I wanted to bring to your attention work that the World Bank has been doing with the six Western Balkan countries, which can be of extreme relevance. So to facilitate trade and to improve logistics in the six Western Balkan countries, we have launched a lending program called the Western Balkans Trade and Transport Facilitation Project. The bank plays an interesting role here. It's a role of an honest broker, a long-term development partner of these countries, but also of a convener of stakeholders, and that has open opportunities to deepen precisely the regional integration angle that I've been talking about. This is a program of about $140 million, and the financing goes towards technology and system more so than infrastructure. But this project is highly relevant for Greece, as it supports the interventions in North Macedonia and in Serbia, primarily targeting Corridor 10. And this is the most critical connection between Greece and the Central European hinterland. And because the project will improve the freight integration among the six countries, Greece actually stands ready to be among the largest beneficiaries of the program, even if Greece is not per se directly participating. In other words, exploring opportunities like this one for coordination with neighbors and for seeking complementary intervention can be a direct facilitation of Greece's regional gateway strategy and put this in practice. So something to bear in mind. Let me briefly turn to the second topic before we turn to questions. This is the importance of increasing resilience to shocks and natural disasters. The current pandemic is a very strong reminder of the importance of building resilience for helping societies deal with shock, including natural disasters. Disaster relief is very closely linked to the World Bank's mission, because what we have seen from empirics and from global evidence is that disasters impact the poorest most, and this comes on top of whatever negative economic impact disasters may have. Greece is among the most exposed countries to natural disasters in Europe. If we look at the numbers, we see that just over the last 10 years, there were close to 50 major natural disasters, and here I'm talking about floods, droughts, storms, wildfires, heat, earthquakes, and they have brought fatalities, unfortunately, they have affected many people, and the direct damage has been estimated at over 10 billion US dollars. The experience suggests that Greece's aging public infrastructure will benefit from upgrading to meet some of those modern seismic standards and being able to withstand some of the geological and hydrometeorological events. So physical resilience of critical infrastructure and services is a policy and investment priority must for countries exposed to disaster risks, and I'm sure that the authorities are closely thinking along these lines. We at the World Bank have had experience working with countries in the EU as well as beyond the EU, where we have developed an approach that looks at three types of resilience, physical, or if you will, structural resilience, social resilience, and institutional resilience. When we engage with our client governments, we basically help them and encourage them to adapt to climate change, risk management, as well as resistance to disasters. We work through frameworks, through national and regional plans for disaster risk management, but we also work through implementation, and considering critical infrastructure is of importance here. Sorry to interrupt. We're running very short of time here now, so I just wanted to ask you to draw your remarks to a close. Thank you. Yes, 
Wonderful. So those are the three points I wanted to make. And I wanted to say that forums like this one are really a wonderful opportunity where we can uh, connect and explore these benefits. Thank you.